The women's game is at a crossroads in England. At the start of the year, the RFU awarded 28 full-time professional contracts, allowing the game's elite female players the chance to train full-time in the sport they love. The country's biggest clubs now compete for honours in Tyrrell's Premier 15s. As the season draws to a close, we join reigning champion Saracens as they bid to retain their title. In front of them stands a semi-final against bitter rivals Wasps. Yet challenges also lie off the pitch, where female players face a battle for the hearts, minds and attention of the wider rugby community. When I first got involved with uh, Saracens women, I was probably a little bit oblivious to the success that they'd had, you know, to the, to the multiple titles for the, the, just the serial amount of internationals they've produced. There's some wonderful athletes, some real role models and, and high quality rugby players forget Forget if they're male or female, they're just quality rugby players who are as committed as, as anyone else had come across in rugby. And I think the perception was, oh, women play rugby too, or, or girls don't play rugby. I think it's got to a point now, whereas if you've seen women's rugby, you will um, you would talk really highly about it. But if you haven't seen women's rugby and you don't actually know about it, and you're like, oh, do women actually play rugby? Then that's where, it, that is annoying for us. I was at an airport once and one of our girls was sat next to a guy on the plane who said that he didn't think that women should be playing rugby and we were returning uh, you know, on our way home for an international tournament. When I said to somebody the other week, um, oh, I play rugby, she kind of replied with, oh, is it, contact is it is it the same as the men's um, because they haven't actually seen it and they're judging us just because they think it's a male sport but as soon as they, they have seen it I think their opinion changes massively because they see our skill level and they're actually like oh wait um, you are actually like as good as men. well you have a different approach to how we play but we're not like a massive step down from the men I would say you know it's not quite the same brand as the men and you know we don't claim to be the same kind of brand of rugby but it's it's women's rugby and it's, it is physical and it's skillful. Particularly with the success of the 2014 World Cup you sound you saw that people were more aware that it actually it was a, a game played by by everyone and I think bit by bit the media exposure the success on and off the field has just meant that it's now front and centre in a lot of the rugby clubs and certainly in the media as well. The women's game is at an interesting point at the moment because with a team like England having gone professional recently and the Premier 15s being two years into its contract about to end that and come into its third, there is very much a focus on the growth of the game and the fact that more and more people are supporting it and getting into it. I love being in the gym and people coming up to me and say, oh, what, what are you training for? And you say rugby and they're like, oh, great. And they get into conversation. We don't get the silly questions of, oh, is it the same laws as the men's game then? You know, we obviously put a lot of pressure on ourselves to perform because we want to play well for the club. It gives Saris an even better name if they've got uh, a men's team that's hugely successful and a women's team as well. It's a physical game, there's a need for physicality, whether that be a, you know, a speed attribute, a power attribute. We are looking at, at some of those characteristics, but ultimately it's, it's, it's a skill-based game. We don't just want kind of the biggest and the, and the strongest. We want players that can be creative, that can find different solutions. But ultimately as well, probably one of the biggest things that we look for is, is the right person. It's people that we can feel can add to our environment on and off the field, and, that, and that's something that we invest in heavily when we, we're looking to recruit, is that yeah, it might be an outstanding rugby player, but what else are you going to add to, to us as a group? Just come down and watch, because there's only one way to find out. If you think it's, if you don't think it's at the same standard as men, come and find out for yourself. The hit, hits are as big, um, the skill set is just as, as good, um, but I guess until you come and watch it, you won't know. Saracens are a formidable package in terms of their couple of seasons in the Premier 15s. They've just got a lot of power in that back row. The likes of Bryony Cleo, Poppy Cleo, Marley Packer have been immense for them. Saracens have the ability to put teams to the sword by being incredibly physical and they've got a decent amount of pace and nous out the back and, and wide as well with the likes of Sarah McKenna at the back who's a former seven specialist. The kicking element in the women's game is, is really, I think, the next big hill to climb. You've got better kickers in the game now. Zoe Harrison at Saracen's capable of controlling games and playing rugby traditionally as we're used to seeing it now. Um, she's an amazing kicker and she's really kind of brought that to this this side. We didn't have that so much before. The way that we can exit out of a 22 is 
um, so much better than it's ever been um, because she kind of brings brings that um, kicking game where she can get that distance and accuracy. I think it's a place where the woman's game needs to go. Um, I think we need to get more top kickers in the league and it, it will grow the game. I don't think the accuracy has been there so much in the women's game, but like I say, in all different women's teams, there are those kickers that are growing and um, actually bringing the game forwards. We are seeing more and more girls that are capable of kicking well, but I think the number needs to increase. And I think for the sake of, of good percentage play rugby alongside the flashy stuff and, and the running rugby that we want to see, that will increase people's understanding of the, of the game and what the girls are trying to do so that it, it does match up a little bit more to the men. But I'm not saying we all want to go straight down the route of, of endless ping pong kicking that sometimes can ruin any decent men's game. Yeah, now go, now go, now go. Yeah, keep working round. Hit the breakdown. Keep working round. Yeah, off me. You didn't need to come in on that. You could have stayed off me. No, this is where we're losing last play of the game. We always do that and we always win it after. <laughs> Thanks for letting us do a backs move. Huh? Yeah, it did actually. Do you want to do anything else? I don't think we've ever done a backs move. So let's get let's get something on. Slide it. Yeah, flash, flash, flash. <laughs> And that's what I call crossing. <laughs> yeah, come round, it's gone. Black, 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 black. Yeah, red, red. You don't need all need to be in that rock. When someone's done a line break, so there. There was a lot of you salmons running to the breakdown. Notice if you're like the fourth player running to it, notice that there's three in front of you. You don't, that ruck is fine. If there's three going over, that's fine. Step out and get ready for a red or something. Just step out and offer yourself. Otherwise, I'm trying to call a red and then you're like, Shh, too late. And then it's all like. Let's not get bogged down in the minutiae of something. When actually, keep it simple, execute against it. And if it goes wrong in the moment, rectify the shit out of it. First of all, I know it might be semantics, but I'd, I'd question the amateur status there. They might be professional with a small p, so they've got careers outside of here, but they're certainly they're driven, you know, to be the, the best rugby players they are in an environment that's that supports them. As a squad, we 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 all have a huge amount of respect for each other, whether you're. A full professional or you're brand new to the sport I think well, I have a massive respect for the people that have to go out and work and they've got come here after a long hard day and and, and train to the, their full ability and I'm sure they have a huge respect for for us as as professional athletes that what we've done to sort of get get to get to where we are. Uh, the EPS contracted uh, players it is their full-time job so they have more time to recover was probably one of the big things for them. We were originally sort of working during the day, training in the evening, and we'd be knackered. We wouldn't have time to like recover and rest, which is really quite key for us. And it did really take a long time to get used to. People didn't know, I suppose, how to balance probably the life between like being professional and then having a, a social life. And, you know, it was impossible to sort of get away from the rugby bubble. And when you're given a full-time contract, you think 24 seven, you know, I've got to be dedicating everything to rugby. I can have, one-on-one -on -one skill sessions where my sole focus is little like tiny details that can help you massively and I might not have had the time to have done that when I wasn't professional. Being able to train throughout the day, being able to kind of make the most of you yourself as an athlete is amazing and it, it develops you as a rugby player more so than it ever could because the other girls here you kind of either have to get up ridiculously early to go to the gym to then do a full day of work and then to come here for rugby training at seven till half nine in the evening. You know, some of us who are professional now did experience that world. Um, so we know, we know full well what it was like. I commend uh, the vast majority of our players for still being able to commit to you know, a programme that's only asking and demanding more of them uh, and still being able to, 
to continue with a full-time role in whether, whether that's teaching, whether that's you know, like high-end industry, which you, I should imagine a full-time job in there is pretty pressurised anyway. We've got players in the team that they're not, as with all teams, men, women, in any sport, they're not all going to want to necessarily play for their country. But sometimes those players that are here and they're like almost the bread and butter of the team. I think as professional players, we know our responsibility to those who, who um, aren't supported in the same way as us. So we know that at times we have to do a little bit of extra work so that you know we can get everyone else up to speed in terms of the analysis, like I said, and, and putting those hours in. Everyone is working hard. There is that drive to be an athlete. Not everyone wants to be professional. It's not, it isn't all about that. I think rugby is a great sport where you have that professional side to it, which you can you can go far in, but it's also one of those things that's like a, a big family. You don't need to necessarily want to then play for your country, with, but you need those players that make our teams, we've got such breadth and depth, which means that when we have had injuries this season, when we've got the development league as well, it means that we've been able to field two fantastic teams because of that depth that we've got within our squad. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it raises standards, it, um, you learn from each other, it's, it's a great position to be in, to have that, 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 those people around us. Thing, all right, so they've got multiple areas where they can they can target us. Whether that be the breakdown, whether it's the speed on the edges, where it be some of their physicality. Coach Alex Osterbury has been a central part of Saracen's success. His no-nonsense approach to the game earning the respect of the players. They're essentially very very annoying. So we've got to make sure that we don't rise to that. So let's feed the beast, empower it. Let's put ourselves in positions and let's make sure that when. We're under a bit of pressure, we turn that pressure over, we force Nolly to do something she's not comfortable with, we'll get a better exchange out of it, we then get an ability to play and empower something that was, was pretty destructive. You know, we've uh, got a new coach, um, but I've worked with Alex before and I know, you know his ambitions within the game and I know he wants to play a really exciting game of rugby and physical brand of rugby. Yeah, so I came in uh, 2006 to the Saracen Sport Foundation. A couple of people there, Gordon Banks and a lady called Hannah Perney, who were massively about engaging uh, youngsters and changing lives through the power of sport. To help grow that department, got some really exciting opportunities from there and then bit by bit kind of move towards working with the academy at Saris. Yeah, quick ball, so tempo. So we need to be energised with our line speed and with our attack. So it might be punch, punch, and then we're going to explode. Can we keep the tempo up, keep them on the field, keep them running around? Because we've seen that if we can do that, they become a little bit disconnected indeed. But Very detailed, obviously has a massive knowledge for the women's game, which I think is, is, is huge, obviously. Um, and yeah, I think all the players have a massive respect for him. And he's always been somebody who kind of is quite brutally honest. It can be, yeah, yeah. It, you can hear some stuff that you, you don't think is right. At first, I didn't like him. I thought he was quite abrupt. I thought that he was unfair. <laughs> uh, OK. <laughs> but actually, it turns out that he just wanted the best for me. He saw, he saw potential in my game. So it was one of those things, as I got older, I started to understand why he was doing it and what he was trying to get out of me. Ahead of their final training session before Wasps, coach Alex gives the girls a pep talk and it involves pigeons. All right, I'm driving here generally this morning and uh, on the roundabout there's pigeons having a lovely day, all right, happy. Like genuinely, just sat in the road on a roundabout and I'm thinking, that pigeon's not got care in the world. Obviously the best place it is in life, found some seed on the floor. And for me, at the minute, we're in a pretty good place. All right, we've earned the right to be in a place where we've got a home semi-final, the top pigeons. of the tree. We have There's a story to it, all right? <laughs> and this pigeon's there, oblivious, came complacent. A massive <coughs> car that's coming around the corner at a fair speed. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it goes over this pigeon, and this pigeon then starts to fight, and I'm like, you can see it bouncing off the top of the tree. <laughs> It goes towards the front wheel, like gets kicked out the back, and then miraculously, this fucking pigeon comes out like it's like reborn out the exhaust and flies off. And I was struggling for a story today, and I was like, 
You get the pigeon in here. Right. But when what the pigeon did when it was in a bit of trouble is it started fighting and it fought for its life. We can put that into all elements of our game. We talk about our breakdown work. It's that fight on the ground, that role, that you find a way of getting out of the situation. Can we get that in there? Can we do things right under the real pressure where we fight to do that bit extra? So if I look at the places that we've been, we've been points down against Loughborough and we've come back, you know, final play. We found a way. Like, we, we have fight to the death mentality. We're up against Quinn's here. You know, we were trusted group of, of warriors, essentially, that, yeah, we were getting beaten in a little bit of a battle, but we won the war. Whatever it is, can we be that plucky-ass pigeon that took on something about a thousand times heavier than it and still found a way? Found a way of surviving. I think once you develop a trust with players, you, you, you can be, obviously, honest, which is one of the core values of the club. And I'd like to think there's some kind of emotional intelligence and compassion behind that, but. I think you lay out your stall and you understand, and they understand that the, the kind of, as a group, what, what it is that we want to achieve, how about we're gonna, you know, how we're gonna go about doing that. And I think then ultimately, if you, if you get that trust and you get that collective relationship, you can be honest. I think in any sport, being honest is, is key nowadays. There's no point having anything behind closed doors. Um, and I think Alex has brought that back to the club. He's made it more um, open and honest environment. Which is, I think, what you need when you're a developing rugby player, especially at that age when you kind of have different choices that you could be making. It was the World Cup year for the, for the men's and um, I had got tickets to go watch the men play at Twickenham. It was going to be an amazing game. I think I was playing in the Premiership. I'd just got into um, the first team at Saris and I was quite new to it, but we had a game versus Bristol um, that weekend. And I said to Alex, I've got these amazing tickets. I can't play at the weekend, sorry. And he said, is that really the best idea? I hadn't quite got my um, first cap for England yet and he was just like there's going to be coaches there watching that game because it's a big game and he kind of knocked some sense into me pretty much and I didn't go and watch um, the big game at Twickenham and I played um, the Bristol game and then from then on it, it was the right decision because I went on and got um, my first England cap soon after. What does he say? He always says it's, it's decisions not um, sacrifices. Swords here with the ball. Yeah, kneel that ball, please. Can we get two defenders in the wide channel? I think this, the season we've had so far, it's been a real positive season for us. We've only lost one game and it was, it was a real tight game against Harlequins. Yeah, we've had some sticky results and we've, we've pulled through. We've shown our resilience in, in many games. I don't think we know when we're beaten at times, um, you know, coming back from results that really weren't going our way. Yeah, good option, get through and over. One more phase, one more phase, let's go. You know, week on week we've improved, we've made massive Im improvements and uh, as a squad we've developed. We feel we've done the vast majority of, of, of our detail work. It's now just a little bit more of a captain's run, just sort of a couple of specific options and, and players and, and style of players that we think we can get some some reward from if executed well. We know that we can't be complacent. We can't go into the game like we have done in the, in the last few weeks where we've put the pressure on ourselves and, and had to come back in the last few minutes. OK, so we thought we had it over. It didn't quite work. We, we talked about tempo, but tempo has got to be appropriate for the opportunities there. It broke down a little bit. We know what we're looking to do, but if, it's, if we just got a little bit off kilt, use a reset. It's just ensuring that we're clear on what it is we're looking to do. The execution of a couple of, like I say, extra layers that we've added and then just leaving here in a place where we've left no stone unturned and, and we're ready to go. Because if not, what's will routine that will, will punish us and there's, there's no second chances on Saturday. All right, so that's it. The pass isn't on, we probably won't give it. If it has gone to that person and, and someone's not quite done the support line, someone else bust the gut to look after the back of someone. If I'm not required, I'm in the position to carry or clear on the next phase. If I've carried on clear on that phase, I'm probably not going to be involved in the next phase after that. So just keep things simple and for that to work, Clarity of voice, clarity of message, and if it does go to shit, just reset. If we take the same amount of pride, the same amount of detail, the same amount of kind of it's shit or bust to every element of the game, to every moment, to every bit of momentum, then we're going to be a far better place. So let's make sure that, yeah, things will go well, things will go to plan, but we tidy shit up and we get on with it. All right? Be the pigeon. Pigeon! Pigeon on you, Lottie. Sorry!
The talking is over. What's left now is for the team to perform on their home turf of Allianz Park. The season is on the line as they fight to make it through to the Premier 15's final. As in any sport, the route to the top is never easy. Saracen's women's team is no different, with players from all walks of life now pulling on the famous red and black jersey. They are a team that we admire in many ways in terms of how full blood they are. They have a lot of passion, a lot of energy. So we expect a battle, we expect physicality. Our results since Christmas have been far from, from one-sided. It's been very tight, you know, games, three games won with last players, another game won defending our line. So ultimately we have been massively tested. So today I'm expecting exactly the same, but I think with our preparation, also our experience from this season, we're in a pretty good place. Obviously we've got confidence having beaten them in uh, two games previously, but we know that they've had some really great weeks training and they've been putting in loads of hard work. So I'm sure they're going to be a different beast to what we faced uh, previously. I think we know that we're going to have to fight hard. I think we know that they've got some threats and I think if we don't come out fighting, then there is a chance that the result isn't going to go our way. When we've got to this stage now, we've scrapped the, the rest of the season. We don't care about the last two games when we played them. We care about this game now. This is like our ultimate game of the season. This is the biggest um, contest that we will have had so far. Although we've beaten Wasps twice, there have been tight games. Wasps have come back um, after half time, especially in that second game. They're a, they're a tough, tough opposition. At this point in the season, it's ruthless. You get a couple of things wrong in the game and there's no coming back from it. This is like a bit of a new season from us. This is the playoffs, this is where it counts. We've got to go out there and put on like a massive fight against them because they will come out as well at us, especially as we're top of the league. We know that all teams are kind of gunning for us and we've got to, to keep going and we, we can't let our guard down. Both teams are, you know, incredibly competitive in their desire to, to win the Premiership and do well for their team. So we know at this point that there are no, no, uh, you know, second chances. So we know that from the off, we've got to be, we've got to be dead on it.
not stressed on the edge, yeah? So we can allow them to go into that area as long as we're not overtaking, yeah? Okay, so we can pull you into the space, start square, yeah, but let's not get yeah, too far on the outside shoulder. This is here for the taking, but we have got to step up to our standards. We have got to be the Saracens that you've been all year. Let's get it right. 12 6 is not a bad place to be, it's far worse places, but we can go to a better place if we execute against our standards. Uh, get me in my zone, please don't let me in my zone. Uh, get me in my zone, let me, let me in my zone. Uh, let me in my zone, please don't let me in my zone. Please don't let me in my zone. I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation. You can conversate to that phone. Uh, my God up on that throne, yeah. So I'm never alone, yeah. All these people trying to box me in. I may weather, it's on, yeah. Now they ask where I'm at. Making hits that I'm back. I'm MJ, I'm 2 3, man. I just need some time back. I'm zoned in like defense. My life gone, no recess. But I live my best one, so I got no regrets. So go, I'm gone. Finally back in my home. I'm working like so much, they swear I had me a crow. Can't answer my phone now, just leave it there, that tone. Real fight, pretty happy with how we came out in the second half. You know, we got on the front foot, got that early score, and then I thought we controlled the game a bit better. That said, it was it was a fight all the way through. Yeah, I think it was quite a difficult game, but I think we knew that when when we were training this week, and we knew that we had to really like analyse them, see where they could potentially have weaknesses, and really go at them. We kind of really took it to them um, in some parts of the game, but sometimes we just weren't clinical, clinical enough. I think we improved on our part of the game that we wanted to with the penalties, keeping that lower. We played too much in our own 22. We needed to exit we needed to get out at the start of the game we were a bit um airy fairy didn't know where to go and then we came together especially at half time and then we came out and we knew we had to get that um first score after half time it's amazing to see so many girls that it, that you don't know so many people here that are kind of coming up to you and kind of congratulating you on the game that you've never seen before it's really nice to be kind of signing flags and have people enjoy coming to watch you play because I never had that when I was younger. I didn't have a women's team to kind of look up to and um, to kind of know that that's what you could aspire to be. The legacy of, the, of, of today will be bigger crowds next week, bigger crowds in years to come and that's what we're all striving for. Every player, everyone at the club, how can we can we showcase a great sport and, and, and great sports people, real role models for everyone out there. We've been happy with today but this isn't, this isn't the end of the journey is it? Right, next time out we're going to be even more sorry so we're going to take this take all our other experience, take that into that final game and put in something that we can look back on with pride. A win's brilliant, well done. We look back on the next performance with even more pride and hope we can as well. final last year. Harrison shows and goes. Harrison has her second. And the sideline, it just about gets there. And Saracens are Tyrrell's Premier 15th champions for 2019. They're the best of the best and they've gone back to back.